and kiss thy fair god ears, my gentle joy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where's Peabottom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peabottom. Oh, where, where's Cobweb? Oh, Debbie! Oh, good Cobweb, get you your weapons in your hand and kill me a red tipped humblebee on top of the thistle. And bring me the honey bag. Oh, oh where's my suit seed? Ready? What's your will? Nothing but to help scratch. <laughs> I must to the barber for me thinks I am marvelously hairy about the face. And I am such a tender ass. If my hair did not tickle me, I must scratch. <laughs> I have a reasonably good ear for music. Oh, say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat? I could munch on your good dry oats. Methinks I have a great desire for a bottle of hay. Good hay. Sweet hay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a venturous fairy who will sing the squirrel's horn and let it be nothing. Actually, I'd rather have a handful or two of dried peas. But I pray you let none of your people stir me. Or I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Oh, sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms, carry thee gone, and yell away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Seest thou the sweet sight? <laughs> her daughter's now I do begin to pity. For meeting her late behind the wood, I then did ask her for change in child, which straight she gave me, and so fairy sits back with my bower in fairyland. And now I have the boy, I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And she depart, remove the transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swing, that he, waking when the others do, may all happen to back again repair and think no more of tonight's accidents than the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I'll release the fairy queen. Seest thou as want to be, and seest thou as want to see. Diane's bud o'er Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my companion, wake me, my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> there lies your thought. <laughs> Oh, mine eyes do loathe this visage now. Silence a while. Good puck. Take off his head. <laughs> <laughs> Take hands with me and rock the ground where on these sleepers be. Now thou and I are new in amity and will tomorrow midnight solemnly dance and do Theus' sins triumphantly and to all fair prosperity. There shall the pairs of faithful lovers be wedded with Theseus, all in jollity. 
My lord, attend the mark. I do hear the morning lark. Come, my lord, and in our flight tell me how came this night. That I, sleeping here, was found with these mortals on the ground. <laughs> One of you, go! Find out the forest. For now our observation is performed. My love shall hear the music of my hound. I was with Hercules and Cadmus once, when in the woods of Crete we bade the bear with the hound of Spot. Never have I heard such musical a discord, such sweet thunder. My hounds are better than Spartan kind. A cry more tunable was never hollow to in Crete, in Sparta, nor in Thessaly. Judge when you hear. Stop! Put nymphs in these. My lord, uh, this is my daughter here sleeping. That Lysander. This is Demetrius and that Helena, all in the dark's Helena. I wonder if they're being here together. No doubt they rose up early to observe the rite of May, and hearing our intent came here in grace our solemnity. Speak each is. Is not this the day that Hermia should give answer of a choice? It is, my lord. Go! Wake them! <coughs> Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine is past. You get these woodbirds but a couple now. Uh, pardon me, my lord. I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? I shall reply amazedly, my lord, half sleeping and half awake. As it is, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly I would speak. I came with Hermia here. Our intent was to be gone from Athens. Oh, enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. Thank the law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away, they would have, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. You of your wife and me of my consent, of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, for Helena told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood. And I am fearing hither follow them, for Helena and fancy following me. But my good lord, I was not by what power, but by some power it is. My love for Hermia. Melted as the snow, in all the faith, the virtue of my heart, the object, the pleasure of mine eye, is only in heaven. <laughs> to her, my lord, was I betrothed there, I saw her again. But like in sickness did I loathe this medicine. But as in health, did I come to my natural taste. Now I do love it, wish it, long for it, and will forevermore. Be true to it. <laughs> Their lovers, we are fortunately met. This discourse we more here anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your word. For in the temple, by and by with us, these two couples shall eternally be knit. But for oh. now the morning is something worn, and our purpose something shall be set aside. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold the feast in great solemnity. Come, Hippolyta. Like a jewel. 
Might own then not might own. Are you sure that we're awake? <laughs> For it seems to me that we sleep, we dream. Did not the Duke come and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Yes. Then we are awake. <laughs> come, let us go. By the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> My next is most famous. Hey ho! Peter Quint! Flute the bellows mender! Snout the tinker! Starveling! Oh, it's my life stolen, hence it left me asleep. Vision. I've had a dream past the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if we go about to expound on this dream. <laughs> <coughs> I thought I was. No man can say what I thought I was. But me thought I was. And me, and me thought I had. But man is a past fool if you're going to say what me thought I had. <sighs> the eye of man has not heard, the ear of man has not seen, his hands not taste, his eyes not able to conceive, nor his heart able to report what my dream was. I will get Peter Quince to write a battle of this dream, and it shall be called. Bottom's dream, <laughs> for it has no bottom. <laughs> and I shall sing it at the latter end of the play. Yes. Her adventure, to make more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. Then the play is marred. It goes not forward, doth it? It is not possible. You have not a man in all of Athens able to discharge Pyramus, but he. No, he has simply the best wit of any man in Athens. Yea, and the best person, too, and he's a very paramour for a sweet voice. You must say paragon. Uh, paramour is God bless us a thing of naught. Masters. The Duke is coming from the temple. And there are two or three more lords married. Oh, three. Oh, if our sports gone for we'd all been made men. Oh, sweet Polly Bottom. Plus that he lost sixpence a day during his life. He could not escape sixpence a day. And the Duke had not given him sixpence a day for playing Pyramus, I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Sixpence a day in Pyramus? Or nothing. Where are these lads? Where are these hearts? Oh, 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 oh. 
Most courageous day. Most happy hour. <laughs> Masters, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what for if I tell you I have no true opinion. I will, but I will tell you them right as they fell out. Let us hear, sweet. Not a word of me. Get your power together. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look o'er his part. In any case, let this be half clean linen. And let him that play the lion's part pair not his nails, for they shall hang out as lion's claws. <laughs> <laughs> and most dear actors, eat no onions, no garlic, for we are to utter a sweet breath. And I do not doubt to hear it is a sweet colony. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, 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 no more words. No more words. Oh, wait. Go away! <laughs> Tis strange, my dear husband, that these lovers speak. <coughs> More strange than true. I never may believe these antique fables nor these fairy toys. Lovers and madmen have succeeding brains. One sees more devils than Bastille can hold. That is, the madman, the lover, all as frantic that sees Helen's beauty in a brow of each. Or in the night imagining some fear, how easy is a bush supposed to bear? Well, but all the story of the night told over, and all their minds sit together, and it grows to be something strange and admirable. <laughs> <laughs> Look, here come the lovers full of joy and mirth. Joy, gentle friends. Joy and fresh days of love accompany your hearts. All oh, more than to us, wait in your royal walks, your board, your bed. <laughs> Come now, what, what mask, what dances shall we have to wear away this long age of three hours between our after supper and bedtime? Woo! <laughs> our usual manner of mirth, what revels are our hands? Is there no play to ease away the anguish of a torturing hour? Illustrate. Here, mighty Theseus. What entertainment have you for this evening? What mask? What music? How shall we beguile the lazy time if not with some delight? There is a brief what sports are ready. Make choice of which your highness will see first. How shall we find the concord of this discord? A play there is, my lord, some ten words long, which is as brief as I have known a play. But, my lord, it is too long, and therefore tedious and tragic, for Pyramus therein doth kill himself, <laughs> which when I saw rehearsed, I must confess, made my nice water, <laughs> but uh, more merry tears. What are they that you blame? Hard-handed men that work in Athens here, which never labored in their minds till now. And we will hear it. Oh, no, it is not for you. I have seen it over, and it is nothing. I will hear that play. Whenever anything can be amiss when simpleness and duty tend. Go, bring them in, and take your places, ladies. I love not to see wretchedness or charge, and duty in this service perish. My gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. But he says they can do nothing in this kind. But the kind are we to give them thanks for nothing. Trust me, sweet, out of this silence yet I pick the welcome and in the modesty of fearful duty, read as much as from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious elephant. Love, therefore, and tongue-tied simplicity, and least speak most. Now, please, to a grace, the prologue is addressed. Let him approach. If we do offend, it is with our good will. We come not to offend, but to show our simple skill. All for your delight. We are here. This fellow does not stand upon points. He has heard the prologue like a rough colt. He knows not to stop. A good moral, my lord, it is not enough to speak, but to speak. <laughs> Like a tangled chain, nothing impaired but all disorder. <laughs> Who's next? Gentles, 
Perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus. This beauteous lady, Thisbe, is certain. <laughs> this man, with lime and rough cast, doth present wall. Sunder, and through walls chink. Poor souls, were they content to whisper. <laughs> this man with lantern doth present moonshine. For if you will know, by moonshine did Pyramus and Thisbe think to meet at Minas' tomb there. There to woo. There. This grisly beast lieth by name. This be coming first by night did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion, with bloody mouth, did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, to find his trusty Disby's mantle slain. Whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast, his dagger drew, and died. <laughs> To all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse. While here they do remain. I wonder if the lion speaks. No wonder, my lord, when one, when one lion may, as many asses do. <laughs> in this same... <clears throat> In this same interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. And, and such a wall as I would have you think, did have in it a cranny hole or chink. <laughs> Which the lovers, here Miss and Thisbe, did whisper often very secretly. This loam, this rough cast, and the stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this the cranny is right and sinister, through which the fearful lovers are to whisper. <laughs> but I am prepared to be better. This is the wittiest partition I ever heard discourse, my lord. You must draw near the wall. <laughs> oh, grim look, knight! Oh, knight with hue so black! Oh, knight! Whichever art when day is not. Oh, night! Oh, night! The lack, the lack, the lack! I fear my Disney's promise is forgot! And thou, oh, wall of sweet and lovely fall, that standest between her father's land and mine. Cheery lips have often kissed thy stone. 
disgrace. Kiss me through this vile wall. <laughs> By wall, <laughs> my part discharged so, and being done, thus wall away doth go. <laughs> now is the mural down between the two neighbors. No remedy, my lord, when walls are so willful to hear without warning. <laughs> this is the least dumb I have ever heard. Well, this is kind of a shadow them. The worst or no worse of imagination amend them. Must be your imagination and not theirs. We imagine no more of them than they of themselves, and they may pass for excellent men. Look, here come two gentle beasts in, a man and a lion. <laughs> you, ladies, you, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest monstrous mouse that creeps on floor may now perchance both Quake and tremble when lion, rough and wild as rage doth roar. <laughs> but know that I am one snug vagina. No <coughs> <laughs> else than lies down, for if I as lion should come in strife, twere pity on my life. A very gentle beast of good conscience. <laughs> Let us listen to the moon. This lantern doth the horned moon present. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself, the man. This is the greatest error of all the rest. <laughs> the man should be put in the lantern, or else is it the man in the moon? <laughs> I am weary of this moon, but that he would change. Oh, proceed, moon. All that I have to say is. This lantern is the moon. I, the man on the moon. And look, here comes this bee. Yeah. So hath thy breath, my dear. 
outsword, and room the pack. I that left pap the pyramus where heart doth hop. Thus die I. Thus. Thus. Sing and bless this place. 
and so shall all the couples three ever true and loving be. A trip away, make no stay, and meet me all my break of day. visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And, as I am an honest fuck, if we have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long, else the fuck a liar call. <laughs> so, good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. 